strike today against the long-term erosion of our pay, the cutting of our pension by 35% last year in a single year, issues of casualisation and race and gender pay gaps as well. The salaries in the higher education sector have gone down 25% in the last 10 years. If you're a university lecturer, you do your undergraduate degree, you come out with a 50 grand debt. You then might do a master's degree, you rack up another 20 grand debt. You then have to do a PhD. And so you end up within the region of a £100,000 debt on a starting salary if you're lucky enough to get a permanent established job that won't leave you with a London living wage. Often you're put on hourly contracts, you have to work multiple jobs in order to simply survive. 30% of our workforce are now on casualised contracts. We're all trying to survive with hugely increasing workloads on ever decreasing pay. It's not good for the students, it's not good for the staff. Many people came into the sector. You don't get great pay, but you get a decent pension. That's all now gone. So staff are leaving with no savings, massively in debt, and end up in poverty pension. It's an unsustainable system that has to be fixed. We resisted strongly last summer during a marking boycott. We were the last branch to hold on. We ended up with a, a £700 uplift for all staff. Our branch particularly has been hit because of a very intransigent Vice-Chancellor called Colin Bailey who has threatened staff with indefinite cessation of pay. If we get one of our classes cancelled, they will withhold our pay until we reschedule it. So we'll effectively be working for free for the next couple of months. The money's there. Last year they had an increase of 3,000 overseas students. Now they are all paying between 26 and 28 thousand pounds a year, largely. So the increase there is in the multiple tens of millions. We know the money's there. We demand our share. We know the money's there. We demand our share. As soon as you take off the student number cap from universities, you make students pay fees. You bring in a marketised system where those, the richest universities, will recruit as many students as they possibly can, leaving many other institutions with little money. So you get a completely divided sector. this march because we're in the middle of a local dispute right now management are threatening up to 140 compulsory redundancies both administrative and teaching staff we're not gonna allow this to happen to Birkbeck with its tradition of organizing education for working people Birkbeck's governors are having a meeting today and we know that they are here to decide the future of the university in my own department of English theater and creative writing 50% of colleagues teaching on our English literature programs, myself included, will lose our jobs this academic year. I'm wondering how it will benefit me, a student within the English Theatre Creative Writing Department, to have half the staff evaporate. Birkbeck management are more interested in the accumulation of buildings like this one over here, which they spent about £35 million on, than on sustaining their staff. Between 2010 and 2016, we generated a 70 million pound surplus. We did, the workers did, not the management. They spent 33 million on the now defunct Stratford campus. They bought an ex-car showroom on Houston Road for 55 million. This senior management has put Birkbeck in a 13 million pound deficit, while Vice Chancellor David Latchman sits on a salary of over 300,000 pounds. Our Deputy Vice-Chancellor is also paid over £270,000 a year. Astonishingly, there are another two members of staff on salaries above 250k. And many other senior management are sitting on salaries exceeding £100,000. Birkbeck employs a higher proportion of casualised staff from the average. They're more interested in poor branding exercises, which you might have seen all over the tube, than investing in the very people who are the best asset that Birkbeck has to offer. As an associate lecturer here, I was hourly paid on a fixed term contract, which expired every year, uh, giving me no pay over Christmas, no pay over Easter, no pay over the long summer break, and no long-term job security. I was grossly underpaid for my work, at a rate which has never reflected 
the amount of actual hours it takes to prepare and deliver the high quality education which Birkbeck is proud to promote. And now the same treatment is being handed out to permanent staff who have been here for years and decades. At Goldsmiths we had 52 redundancies on the table in English and creative writing um, last year and earlier this year, this year. We got that down to 17. We struck for 37 days. We had a marking and assessment boycott for four months. And in the end, we got something. They attacked two of our trade unionists by suspending them as the heads of department for telling students about the impact of the marking and assessment boycott. Four months later, they were reinstated with no case to answer. If we could win at Goldsmiths, you're in an even better position to do that at Birkbeck. As we see the UK swept by waves of strike action and communities are devastated by the cost of living crisis, it is more important than ever that we don't lose sight that we are in a climate emergency. As millions struggle with their energy bills, energy companies and fossil fuel giants have seen their profit explode in the last period. As well as better pay, of course, workers and communities could have their home insulated to reduce energy usage and fuel poverty. We could have solar panels installed on our homes to produce our own energy and reduce our dependency on fossil fuel electricity. We could also have ground source heat pumps to move away from gas heater. It will massively reduce emissions and help tackle climate change. It could also create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. Climate justice should be embedded in every campaign, every strike, every community struggle. We need to decarbonize every workplace, but the top priority is to stop new fossil fuel extractions. I'm part of the Climate Network here, which is a coalition of staff and students. We have asked for full divestment. We have £100,000 or thereabouts still invested in fossil fuels. We've asked for them to reduce plastic sold on site and to have a proper waste management system. We also have asked for a decarbonisation plan. Decarbonisation should go along with decolonising the curriculum because they stem from the same issues of capitalism and colonialism. We have a 200 year history founded on social justice. And I don't believe that we are upholding that mission. We must win this fight for the future, not only of institutions like Birkbeck, but for every other university in this country that is at threat. And to do this, we have to be ready to escalate. We have to be ready to say that we will take indefinite strike action in the new year. In May 1968, the students and workers protesting against the French government graffitied the bridges of Paris with the slogan, be realistic, demand the impossible. We need to demand a worker-run university. It is our task to bring about a state of real emergency right now in all of our universities. In solidarity with workers across the public sector, we are the living, beating heart of Birkbeck. Not the people up there in that room, not the people in our management, us, right here. Students, staff, professional services, cleaners, 